Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Welcome to my July back garden tour and my final back garden tour in this garden. So for those of you who don't know, I am moving. My family and I bought a home. It's still in Davis. It's still in the same town that I live in. Um, it's just more space, which is exactly what we needed. My girls needed more space. I need more space for the garden. So it's a really exciting move for us, but it's also bittersweet because I am leaving my garden, right? My pride and joy, my garden. And I did my front garden tour. Uh, you, got, you all saw it yesterday. And I just wanted to apologize for getting emotional. <laughs> I usually don't get too emotional about things. I don't get, um, I don't get too attached to things. Um, I'm, pr I'm usually pretty good about that, but I think that just going through, I spent like an hour and 15 minutes talking about my front garden. And by the end of it, I was just I was just, I, I could not, I could not finish the video. <laughs> so hopefully it's not like going to be like that for the back garden. Um, I think I have more of a connection with the front garden because I spend more time doing the front garden um, than I do the back garden. But you know, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. So what I want to do is I want to take you all around. This is going to be another very detailed garden tour where I go over every single plant that I can, that I can remember the name and talk about, and then talk about if I'm going to repeat it in my my new garden or if I'm gonna just leave it here and forget about it so um, I think I told you all the people that purchased this home um, they are gardeners and I'm really really excited about that they you know they can this is their garden they're gonna be able to do whatever they want but um, we are gonna meet and um, answer any questions they have about the house you know the ratio uh, smart sprinkler system and then if they have any questions about plants that they want to keep I will be more than happy to answer any of those so we will see. And then the other thing I want to say is that I am taking all the pots. We've already talked to the movers and they, this is, this is so ridiculous. They have a whole separate moving truck just for my garden stuff. <laughs> it's like, what? It's just so funny. So they have two moving trucks coming. They have one for all of our inside stuff and then one for all of our outside stuff, which I just think is hilarious. I really hope that I can get some video of that when that the move actually does happen, um, which it's not going to happen until like 14th, mid-August or something like that. Um, so we close, everything closes, uh, in about a week, the first week of August. And, um, but then the people who purchased our home were really sweet and they gave us, uh, two weeks to move out after we close, which is, I mean, that, that's just worth its weight in gold because that means that we don't have to rush and move in one or two days. So we basically have two weeks to get out of here. Um, so we're going to slowly start moving all the small stuff and then have the movers come about a week and a half later. So that is our plan. It's gonna be crazy, bear with me. <laughs> but let's get started here with the uh, the July back garden tour slash final garden tour in this back garden. So I think I'm just gonna turn the camera around and start right here. This is our patio area. This is where we sit. We have our fire pit right here. The fire pit and the couches are from Home Depot. I really like the fire pit. I really do not like the couches. They're fine. Um, they're not very comfortable. Our old couches that we got from Costco were actually a lot more comfortable. This looks better. I think it looks better and it looks prettier and that's kind of what I was going for because I purchased these couches kind of for... <laughs> Not kind of, definitely for uh, the garden tour that we were on, we were in in May, the Pence Gallery garden tour, and I wanted something really pretty and that looked um, nice, and it does it is really pretty and it does look nice, but of course, and I know everybody knew this was gonna happen, <laughs> everybody knew this was coming. Um, the the cushions do kind of get a mess, and I can unzip them and I can wash them, and um, you know it'll be fine. Uh, they just they do get a mess. So yeah, I will probably not recommend <laughs> this couch from Home Depot, so I won't link it. Um, but this, uh, this fire pit is really good. And then the rug I got from Amazon. I love this rug. I've had it for two years now, I want to say. Um, and I have a matching one over here underneath our table. And I got this rug from Amazon and it is linked in my Amazon store. I do get a lot of questions about this clock back here. This clock we used to have it inside our home. It's from World Market, actually. 
and um, it's broken and I didn't want to throw it away. And so I just hung it out in the backyard and I love it. I think it is so beautiful. Um, it did come with, this was like a teal color and I actually just took some acrylic paint and painted it to more of a blue color, which I like better. I like this pale blue color. I'm sure if you all have seen my decor in my house and outside of my house, you know, I like that, that pale blue color for most of my decor. Um, so I actually did paint it a little bit. When you get it at the store, it comes in more of a teal color. I'm not even sure if they still sell that. Um, but this is not meant to be an outside clock. It just stopped working. Um, the batteries got rusted. Uh, and uh, I just, I just took, took the clock part out and just hung it outside, which I, which I really like. Uh, over here, hanging over the fence, this is a Lady Banks rose that is a borrowed landscape from my neighbor. I love it, and he always asks me if um, if I want him to come and prune these crazy pieces here, and I always say no because <laughs> I actually really like them. I like them hanging over like this. I think it's really pretty and whimsical, um, and a little bit a little bit crazy, but I kind of like that in a garden. Um, so I have prune these back way back before, um, but I, I kind of like it like that. And when they bloom, they bloom this beautiful yellow color. It's so gorgeous. I love it. Um, and it's just, oh, it's just glorious when it's, when it blooms. Let me go over here to this pot. This was a pot that I put together when I was at Wintour Garden, in, which is a um, independent garden center up in Redding, California. And they do sell Proven Winners. And that's, I did a Proven Winners event there because they're one of the only garden centers around me that um, that sells Proven Winners. So for those of you who live kind of close to my area, look up Wintour Gardens. I will link them down below. They're fantastic. They're actually having a sale on their Proven Winners right now. Um, um, I think it was, you can buy four of them for $30. And I was telling everyone I know, get, get the plants. If you, if you live here, get the plants that are going to be perennials, like the super beanas. Those are going to be perennials for us. So grab those because that's a great price. And then you have fantastic super beanas in your garden that are going to winter over. So if I was going up to Reading anytime soon, I would definitely go there and grab some of those. But this combination I really like. Um, this is Supertunia Daybreak Charm. And I, I love this. I love this color. It's just such a cool, clear pink that I just think it is so pretty. And um, I, I don't often see such a clear and cool undertone Supertunia. I think it's really, really pretty. And I paired it with the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime um, jet black, which I love. I love, love, love this one. And this one I am planning to repeat with the super Bina pink cashmere for next year. That's kind of what I want to do. I have to show you all. I don't want, I don't want to give anything away. I'll show you all when I do the garden tour of my new garden, but I do have a little area that I'm going to be putting annuals and that's where I'm planning to put that combination. And then this one is Unplugged Pink Fuchsia. So, um, no, Salvia, excuse me. <laughs> Unplugged Pink, Unplugged Pink Salvia. Um, there also is a Rock and Fuchsia Salvia. Is this Rock and Fuchsia? No, I don't remember. This might be Rock and Fuchsia. I'm pretty sure this is Rock and Fuchsia. So, Rock and Fuchsia Salvia, this is one that I will be transplanting into my garden. And this one does get taller than the Unplugged Pink Salvia. And I see hummingbirds on this all the time, all the time. It's really beautiful. Now, behind here, I never talk about these plants. These plants were dotted all around, I'm gonna turn the camera, they were dotted all around behind the lawn when we moved in. And I transplanted them over here because I didn't know what to do with them and I didn't know what to do with this area. And I had plans to redo this whole area right here. Um, I was gonna put like a wall fountain right there. It was gonna be, I was really excited about it, but of course I never got to it. So these are Nandina, otherwise known as Heavenly Bamboo. I do not know what variety they were, of course, because they were here when I moved in. But they're really nice. They're in this dappled shade pretty much all day and they're totally, they're fine. And over there, they did get some hot afternoon sun and they could handle that as well. So I do really like these. I do have to say in the adopt -a park that I have just down the street, they, there is some Nandina in there and it's kind of, um, it's kind of taking over. So, uh, just be careful 
right? Be careful with that. These aren't taking over, but I could see that it could kind of get a little bit invasive. And that's something that Gaina and I really are focusing on taking out is taking out a lot of the Nandina. So this plant right here, this is the Camellia. It doesn't look like anything and it's covered with spider webs that I need to come in and, and take care of. This is a pink dot um, uh, Camellia Sisenqua. And this one is from Monrovia. It's very pretty when it blooms. I love camellias because they bring color at a time when I need color big time uh, during January, December, January, February. It's just a time that I really need some color and that's what camellias do. This camellia is a happy birthday camellia. Um, it's again, it's really pretty. It's a really young one. So it only, I only had one bloom from that last year. And then right here, this is a Meyer lemon that um, I got from my neighbor's mother, and I will be taking that with me along with that pot, right? Anything in a pot, I will be taking with me. Um, the sad thing, <laughs> this was my, um, my trial for, uh, what is going on here? Oh, oh. This was my trial for my, my wall of super tunias. And it looked really, really pretty. It looked pretty for a long time. And I think those of you who live in zo lower zones than I do, I think this will be a success for you all season. It's getting to the point where things are starting. I mean, we've had, uh, you know, the, when did I plant this? April, early April or something like that. Um, so it's just kind of, it's just kind of done. I think it's just kind of gotten a little ratty. I cut it way back. I'll see what happens. I don't even know if I'm going to move it to the new house. Um, I might ask the new owners if they want to just keep the pouches. I don't know. We'll see. The one issue I had with though, I put drip in every single pocket. Can you guys see that? Drip in every single pocket. So that was a ton of emitters that I added to my drip system. And what I noticed is once I did that, the drip system it comes, it comes around here, the tubing, it comes around here and then it goes under the sidewalk, feeds the, um, the window box over there and then, and then finishes up over here. And I noticed that this season, this whole side was constantly needing water. It was constantly, I mean, look, let me show you. Look at that. It just, it, it did not get enough water and I was having to come and hand water it all the time. And it was just, it, I've, I've just maxed out my system. Basically, I knew I was going to get to that point. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. And really it happened. It happened with this. This is this, this, it, it was too much for it. So that is a problem with having a wall of super tunias is that, um, if you do it like this, you are going to have to use a ton of emitters and it's just, I don't know. I think, I think if, you know, you, um, had like maybe the proven winners water wise system, and that was the only thing that you had on your system, then, um, maybe it might be easier. I don't know. I don't think I will be repeating that. So let me take you all this way. I haven't trimmed up this area since I've been home. So just bear with me. I have my espalier of my honeysuckle that I love and I definitely will be repeating at the new house. Down here, I have Supertunia Bordeaux. Um, Supertunia, um, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting the name of that? Um, Priscilla, excuse me, Supertunia Priscilla. That's this double purple one. And then Bordeaux is this one right here. That's kind of a plummy purple. And then over here I have cake pops, pink verbena, which this whole section, it gets sun, but it doesn't get a ton of sun. And now, especially since I have this arch with the honeysuckle on it, I think it shades it even more, which has been pretty interesting. But let me take you over here to this area here's my super tunia priscilla here and then here's priscilla and kate pops pink that is obviously looking really really good right here so i like this combination of the two i think it's really pretty um this probably wasn't the best place to put it but you know you gotta kind of you gotta gotta kind of play around with it this window box is my sun window box it has super tunia bordeaux in it it did have some um angelonia that has been like you can kind of see remnants of it but it's totally been taken over that was that was a complete waste um and then i do have this uh lime green sweet potato vine here that i need to come and i need to trim it underneath uh before we move out for the new owners but you can kind of see that the 
water has been sporadic at best for here. So I have been coming and I have been overhead watering just to supplement it, but it is, it is, it has been a problem for sure. So, um, especially with a sweet potato vine that loves water so much that hasn't been, that this hasn't been a good thing for me this year, just because, um, just because of the watering issues that I've had. So yeah, um, so this is some more bearded iris that I divided from the bearded iris that I have in my front garden, and I put some of it back here. It looks beautiful, especially because this is my kitchen window when I do dishes and stuff. When it's blooming, it just it just looks gorgeous. And then my honeysuckle espalier that is just doing fantastic. I do have some black olive hookra right here. It was scorching at first, but now it looks really, really happy. And there are even some blooms. They're done, but I just think that they're so pretty. And so I'm leaving those up. Um, and this is, I just, I'm planning to have so much more hookra in my new garden. I'm there when I was at, uh, cultivate, I was just looking at all the different colors of hookra that they have. Right. And it's just, it's just incredible. Look up Terra Nova nurseries. Um, they have the most beautiful colors of hookra, the most beautiful colors. Um, so I'm hoping I can buy a flat for them or something like that. I'm pretty sure that they, they will sell direct, but anyway, they have beautiful hookras and it's just, it's just so pretty. Okay. So coming this way, let's see, let's see. Right here, I have um, Rose of Sharon Blue Chiffon. Again, it's been struggling because of the water. This is kind of the end of the line. Um, so this has been struggling. My sedum has been struggling. And then my Bougainvillea, it's it's not happy, but it's not dead. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like, you're hanging on. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, so this is something I will definitely talk to the new owners about and... Um, and let them know that it's, it's kind of an issue. Um, and it's my fault. It's, it's that thing that I never had an issue before I put that thing up. So good to know. All right, let me come this way. Same rug. I already pointed that out. This is a new table that we got this year and I am loving this table. I loved the table that we had before. It was like a circle kind of wood table that actually used to be an indoor table for us. Um, and we were going to get rid of it and instead of selling it. Uh, we decided to put it outside and we actually used it outside for years, but it finally succumbed. It kind of split in half. Um, so we knew we had to buy a new table. So we ended up purchasing this one and this one is called Pollywood. Um, if those of you have heard that, they make like Adirondack chairs. It's almost like a plastic. And I didn't like it at first because I don't really like plastic in the garden. But oh my goodness, it is so functional. It is so functional. We are rough. We are really rough on our backyard. I mean, you can see the couch and everything. Um, we always have friends over swimming. And, um, you know, I garden all the time. So I have all these garden these tools and um, there's dirt everywhere and soil everywhere and the girl stuff everywhere. So having this polywood table has really been fantastic. So it's kind of changed my mind on plastic in the backyard. I really, it's, you know, it's, it's not plastic, it's polywood, or I don't know how you say it, but um, it is kind of made to look like wood, but it's really, really been helpful for us. So we are taking this to the new house, um, I will show you all where we're going to put it. I'm, I'm excited about that. This is my one Japanese maple that I have that I've already messed up on. Um, I think, I, you know, it, it's just too much sun is what it was. It's just too much sun. This is the Arium Japanese maple. Steph from Hooked and Rooted gave it to me and um, it was doing so good. It was doing so wonderful. And then we had a massive heat wave here in California. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was all over the country. Um, and it just, it just scorched it a little bit. So it just needs more shade. I'll bring it to the new house. I'm actually going to put it underneath, um, like a little, uh, portico or uh, pergola that they that that I have there <laughs> not they have that I have there um, and I think that it'll be a lot happier and again this is deciduous so it's going to lose all its leaves uh, and then it'll grow all new leaves so I'm not too worried about it 
okay, coming over here. This is my veggie garden. So this is what's called a keyhole veggie garden, and I did that on purpose. This is a wattle fence that I made. Um, I do have videos about it. I get, a, I get asked that a lot. I do have two videos or a couple videos actually about how I made this. I made it one time and I didn't do, I, I mean, I did a fine job, but I just went really quick through it and just did my first one. And this one took me longer because I was trying to make it more sturdy. Um, and I, I just love it. I just think it's so pretty. I am hoping to repeat the wattle fence in my new garden. I probably will, you know, but it's just a matter of getting the sticks. Where I find the sticks for these wattle fences is um, uh, my town does street pickup for green waste. And what people do is when it's time to prune their trees, like their crepe myrtle trees or their mulberry trees, I can find these long, thin sticks just in piles on the street. So I'm the crazy lady that goes around with my SUV and I just fill it with sticks. And that's how I've gotten these sticks for this wattle fence. Then the sails, the sails are, um, the weavers are these things right here. And the sails are the vertical things, things. Um, uh, a, a real wattle fence is supposed to be all made out of stick and it's not supposed sticks and it's not supposed to have wire right here. What I did just to make it a little bit better is I used tomato steaks and I found these black tomato steaks from Amazon and it's, it's working really well and it's pretty sturdy and it's not bending over. And the reason why is I used bamboo steaks before on my first version and the bamboo steaks were kind of getting, um, like rotted and I could almost like like crack them in half basically. So I figured these tomato steaks would work better. And so far they're doing really, really well. Okay. So then those of you who know me know I am a novice veggie gardener. My goal for my next garden is to up my, my veggie garden game. I'm really excited about it because I'll have more space now. And I really, really want to focus on veggie gardening um, this fall and next year and see how I can do with it. Of course, I'm still going to focus on ornamental gardening. That is my love. That is the thing I love how, that I, I love to do the most. But... I am such a novice with veggie gardening that it is a skill that I want to work on and I want to improve. Um, so that is what I'm trying to do this year. So what do I have? I have a bush baby zucchini right here. I have uh, just a basil, just a sweet basil right there. I put in some giant marigolds. They're doing really well. A couple of herbs, sun gold, cherries, and then the Bellini tomato from Proven Winners. And I have to say, last year the Bellini tomato was incredible. It was the best tomato I grew. This year, not as good. And I don't know if it's because I pushed it closer to the window. Last year, my Bellini was here in this spot. Um, so I pushed it closer to the window this year and it's just, it just doesn't taste as good. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why. I'm not totally sure why, but that's okay. I will mess with it. Uh, then this fountain right here, this is from Campania International. It is not running right now because it was so hot. Jason was having trouble keeping it uh, full. And since we're moving, I'm just gonna leave it empty until the movers come and take it away. Okay, so then one, I mean, I talk about this plant all the time and I love this plant. It's purple hyacinth bean. This this whole plant right here is grown from one seed, one solitary seed. I love it so much. As the season goes on, it will get taller and taller and it'll eventually go over the pergola right there. And I just, I love it so much. I love the purple blooms right there. And then the blooms eventually turn into these purple seed pods, which I think are just as beautiful. When you let these dry, then you can harvest the seeds and you can make more and more and more of this purple hyacinth bean. And I just think it's so pretty. I love vining plants. I think it just makes makes a garden. And I think that that's probably because this is, this is a relatively small garden. So going vertical is huge for me. Going vertical is something that you absolutely have to do when you have a small garden because it's basically more square footage that you can use. So you might as well go vertical. This one over here that's not as big, that was actually a... Um, 
a volunteer um, and it doesn't have any drip to it. And so you can see the difference. Water, no water. Um, but it still, it still looks good. It's still doing good. Over here in this back wall, this is a south facing wall of my home. And this is Barbara Carr's Bougainvillea. I did come and I did shear it back and that meant shearing off all of the blooms. The blooms are just so pretty. So, so very pretty. Just like that. Um, Bougainvillea to me is such a fussy plant. It's, you know, it's like once it's established and it's in a spot where it's happy, you kind of don't have to worry about it. But if you need to do anything to it at all, like, you know, it gets a little excess water or you have to prune it or anything like that. It, it's just so finicky to me. So, um, I love bougainvillea. I don't know if I'm going to repeat it in my next garden just because I'm frustrated with it <laughs> these days, but I do love this. Um, you guys should have seen there was nothing here. It was just like bare wall before I got this bougainvillea up and it just made the guard, this back garden so hot and so bare that it needed this foliage up here on the, on the, um, on the wall. And this is exactly what I was planning for it to look like. So I'm so happy with how it turned out. Uh, the bougainvillea though, it's just, um, it's just, it's just kind of a drama queen basically, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, these three pots, these are my three white pots that I will be bringing with me. Unfortunately, I am going to have to cut back all the Superbina pink cashmere, which I'm going to be so sad about, but hopefully it'll grow back. So this Superbina pink cashmere is probably my new favorite annual these days. Um, it is new for 2024. So make sure you tell all your garden centers that you would like to have Superbina pink cashmere next year. They can order it from Proven Winners um, and then have it available for you next year. Or you can order it online, of course. Uh, this is Super Tunia Lovey Dovey. And then back here, this is Lantana, Luscious Lantana Royal Cosmo. So I have to say, which often happens when you find an annual that obviously has taken over, there was no point for me to plant the Lantana or to plant the Lovey Dovey. There was, these should have been monopots and I think they would have looked good as monopots. Um, but the, the, the Superbina pink cashmere is just taking over. So my plan is next year to plant these with that dark jet black Ipomoea, which I think will be able to hold its own against the pink cashmere. And I just think that contrast is going to be really, really pretty. So that's what these are. These will be going with me. Over here, I have Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, and I also have it over here. These are always hard to put. You, you can kind of see, see how wet it is, and that is from the sprinklers. No matter what we do, we cannot get the overspray to stop coming over into this area. So the... Um, the Bobo Hydrangeas love it. They love the extra water, but the Supertunias don't love the extra water. So finding something that can handle a little bit more water, I think will be better there. Um, I think a Supertunia Vista bubblegum will, can handle overhead water a little bit better as well. So that might be a good idea to plant underneath here next year. But I do like the look of the Bobo Hydrangeas with the Supertunias underneath it. Over here, this gate was up for the bunnies, so just ignore it. <laughs> this is um, this is my seascape strawberries. These were my berry barrels. Again, look at all the watering issues I'm having. Like, look at this. It's This has water to it. It obviously doesn't have water to it, but it has water to it. And I've been out here and fixed it. So I think I, I, I think I just maxed out my system this year. So good to know, you know, I think cutting back on it um, will help the new owners a lot. But these are seascape strawberries that I have over here and I am already planning on purchasing. It's on my to-do list to go and purchase a whole bunch of seascape strawberry starts because in my new garden, I want to plant a ton of them. They are so delicious. I haven't been eating a ton of them because my dog has been going crazy this year with them. Um, but they're just, they're just so good. They're just really good, really firm. They're just the best strawberries, best strawberries. Over here, this is my blue barrel rain harvesting system. So you can see it's attached right there to my gutter. So as the rain comes down, 
it will catch it um, it will catch water and then it will put it equally in these four barrels and this system is really cool because you can have as many barrels as you want like literally as many as you want and you just keep connecting them together so this is something I definitely will re be repeating in my next garden especially because we're on a well and you know we deal with drought and all that kind of stuff so I think it'll be it'll be imperative for me to have something like this so I'm definitely planning that um, and you can paint these barrels uh, <laughs> your house color which of course would look prettier and we had plans to paint it but I never got around to it I have a lot of people ask me how like once these get full how it stops the insert for um for the gutter it kind of has a hole in the middle so once this fills up with water and there's no more room then it just the water just drains out the gutter like like it normally would and so it's a really really interesting system for for how it works and this is a shed that we just installed I mean it's it's a good shed the thing I like about this shed is that it came in the mail and it was really easy to put together so this is just all the stuff that we've stored in it just just a whole bunch of pots basically <laughs> is all it is just a whole bunch of gardening stuff so I think um not I think we are gonna leave the shed here but we're gonna take everything out of it um let's see I think I'm gonna leave the wine barrels here too because I think that if the movers try and move them I think they'll probably fall apart so probably just better Ooh, the shade feels good. That area over there gets so, so hot in the morning, I think because it's the rock. And then the bright wall, I walk over there and I just, it's its like an oven over there. So this feels good being in the shade. It's the shade of this beautiful valley oak tree. I'm going to miss this oak tree so much. Um, I don't think we have any oaks in our new garden Sadly, I'll have to plant one. <laughs> never, never see it get big, but I'm pretty sure we don't have any oaks. Um, okay, so over here, these are pergolas. That's three pergolas right there, or three posts, and then three more posts over there. Those pergolas were here when we moved in, so um, I, I don't know anything about them. I don't know what kind of wood they're made of. I did see a receipt from <laughs> the previous owners of this house, and they were not cheap <laughs> to install them, um, so I did not install these myself. Uh, I forgot to tell you all over here these pergolas, these pergolas were installed by Home Depot. So it's a company that contracts with Home Depot. And you can often see, at least at my Home Depots, they have the pergolas outside. This company was fantastic. They're based out of Texas and they are just, they're the best. And we got the natural look, it's cedar. And then we got the natural stain on it. And I'm so happy with it and I love it. And we will probably repeat that in our new house. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I will be happy to repeat it in our new house. Um, so yeah, coming over here, back over here. So this is Hall's Japonica honeysuckle growing on every, um, on all these pergolas and I love it so much. And I will definitely be repeating the honeysuckle because it just makes the garden smell incredibly amazing. I will be bringing my tutor right here. I actually made that tutor myself. I have a video on, I made another one for my parents and I do have a video on those. So you guys can look up DIY to tour um, on my channel and you'll be able to find how to do that. But I will be bringing that and then this winter I will be making more of those because I have so much more room. So what's going on that right now is Clematis Montana in the back and in the front I have some just just some jasmine, regular jasmine. And again, I put the jasmine in there for the garden tour that we had earlier in May. Um, it's actually, it's taken off. It is doing so well. So yeah, it's going to be a bummer to... Um, to kind of rip it off to be able to move the tutor, but I really want to bring this tutor just because it's the first one that I built myself. Um, so I really want to bring it with me. 
Okay, coming over here, I have a couple boxwoods over here. This is an Elegantissima dogwood that I love. It's so beautiful. It's gotten a little scorched with the heat, um, but, but it's doing pretty good. Uh, and then this is a Wichita Blue Juniper, which I will have to tell the new owners that this will eventually get pretty tall, but it's gonna take a couple years for it to get that tall. I just really, really like that color against the honeysuckle. I just, oh man, I just think it's so pretty. So I'll tell them that eventually they will have to move it, but you can prune Wichita blue junipers. You absolutely can prune them. I asked the garden center that when I purchased this and that is why I put it there so that if I really didn't want to move it, I could just leave it and I could just prune off the top, give it a little haircut if I need to. Coming this way, this way, I have Helen Von Stein Lamb's ear here, and I have Helen Von Stein Lamb's ear here. This was a mistake because it gets the overspray, and this is what Helen Von Stein Lamb's ear looks like when it's getting too much water. You can kind of see it like that. It's starting to get yellow and just not very nice looking. This is a Supertunia Vista bubblegum, and it's the same thing. It's just getting too much water. It's not happy. This should be, you know... 400 times the size of that right now and it's just not and that that is fine it was a stretch anyway um mystic spires blue salvia and then i don't even want to show you that don't even look at that that's a camellia that i forgot to hook up to drip so it is dead <laughs> i have two iceberg rose standards that i love and i will be taking with me and i have this bench right here and i do not recommend this bench if those of you have heard me talk about this before i got this bench for christmas from my parents and um, it's already cracking and chipping and it was sold as an outdoor bench. Uh, and we don't get snow, you know? <laughs> we don't get snow and we don't get that much rain. So just the fact that it's already chipping and it's not even, you know, now I think it's maybe six months old, but it just was not a good bench, just not worth it. And I called the customer service for this bench and they were not helpful at all. And so I do not recommend this bench and you should not get this bench. <laughs> so uh, back behind here, I have a, another hydrangea. This is a big leaf big leaf hydrangea that um it's obviously getting too much sun i need to put this in a shadier spot i don't know the name of this hydrangea because it was given to me from um, my neighbor's mother who passed away i have a lot of plants from her this one is still in a pot so i will be bringing that with me and i'm really excited about it i think that it is such an established hydrangea that I think once I get it in a really good shady spot, like dappled shade spot, I think that it's going to, um, I think it's going to be really, really happy. Over here I have, um, these are Fat Chidera. This is a mix between Fatsia japonica and English Ivy. This is a new plant. Ignore all the spider webs. You guys can see I have not been here and I have not finished cleaning everything up. Um, but these are pretty cool. They are an English Ivy, but you can see they don't have those little suckers or stickers that stick to the wall. So, um, it, you know, it's, it, it's an alternative and it does really well in this dappled shade, but you can see it's variegated. So it's going to bring some brightness to the area. They are kind of slow growing. I'm, you know, I wish that they grew a little bit faster, but I think if you were patient, I think that this is a really, really good option for you. Um, if you wanted that vining look, my plan was to put, you know, another espalier up here, but the speed at what this, at which this plant grows, I feel like, and it only gets to about six foot tall, even at full, um, uh, full maturity, you know, you, you're just going to have to be really patient. So I have three of these right here. Um, and I'll just, you know, I'll explain that to the new owners and, and let them know. Over here, I have an agapanthus. I always forget the name of this agapanthus, but it's the pretty dark blue. Um, it To me, it seems like it was kind of late for blooming this year, and I'm not totally sure why. Oh, I wanted to show you all here. Look at this. Look at how this is just, this needs fertilizer, and this needs less water. These are Supertunia Vista bubblegum. So if your Vista bubblegums look like that, more fertilizer and less water is what needs. It's just the wrong spot for it right next to the right next to the grass like that. Then coming this way, I have this pittosporum right here. This is actually the beach ball pittosporum that I love and 
definitely, definitely will be repeating. I really like the small foliage on it. I just think it's so cute and so pretty. This is Solomon Seal, which is a herbaceous uh, plant, and it's beautiful, so beautiful in the spring. I love it because it has these, these petite white flowers that kind of hang on the underside. Now, it's it's not looking great because it's getting too much sun. I will be repeating this in my next garden, but I will be putting it in full shade. I will find a spot that's full shade and then I will be putting that. You can see this is getting morning sun and when we've had the um when we've had the heat wave, even the morning sun is scorching things. So, you know, it's just kind of suffering just a little bit. I could cut it back. I didn't even think about cutting it back until just now. Now that I'm seeing actually, you know, how how rough it is looking. I did want to show you all the sky blue lobelia over here. This sky blue lobelia I just got from Home Depot. Um, I think it's the Miracle Grow brand of plants. They have their own brand of plants, I guess. I just found it um, at the store and I had planned for it not to last for very long uh, because usually lobelia is a cool weather annual, cool season annual, and I thought that it was going to be too hot for it, but you can see it's still, it is still holding its own it's looking really pretty and I just love having blue over here it just it's just so pretty with the slate colored fence if any of you are wondering my fence we painted it bare slate and I'm so happy with that and I will be repeating that in my next garden uh, but this sky blue lobelia really really did very well you can see I still haven't gotten around to cutting back my white licorice helichrysum I will not be repeating this plant <laughs> in my next garden I just it's just not my jam. I just don't love it. I just think it's crazy. Yes, I could cut it back, but um, I mean, you have Dichondra Silver Falls, which is beautiful. So I just, I would rather, I would rather have Dichondra Silver Falls. And then I do need to cut back my um, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. Of course, I will get to that. I actually have to cut everything, everything in my pots way, way back so the movers can be able to handle it. So pretty much after this, I will be going through and I will be shearing my pots off. Hopefully I don't kill them by shearing them off, but you know, they have to be cut back so that I can move them. So then over here I have my limelight hydrangeas. I love these. They're so beautiful. I will miss these just like I'll miss the ones in my front garden. This one right here is always a little bit behind that one. I don't know why. I feel like they get the same amount of light, but they must not. Um, they just don't go at the same time, which I just think is too funny, but they're very pretty. And then over here, don't look too close. I need to water some plants. Um, but these, this is just a mix of uh, some 2024s. This is the Ultra Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine. My Selenia Apricot pretty much succumbed. I mean, it's still alive, but pretty much succumbed. This is... Um, Sweet Sangria, Supertunia Mini Vista Sweet Sangria, and unfortunately this will not be released in 2024, which is such a big bummer. I found that out when I went to Four Star Greenhouse. They will not be releasing this um, for another couple years, I think, but it is coming. It will definitely come. And then here is Cherry Drop Coleus. This one we were all joking about when we were in... Um, when we were in Michigan, because everybody, all the content creators for Proven Winners, we all got Cherry Drop Coleus to try out. And um, can you, can you see? It's called Cherry Drop. Cherry Drop, kind of like Chocolate Drop Coleus that hangs down. This Cherry Drop Coleus does not hang down. <laughs> we were all joking about it. Um, so just be aware if you do end up purchasing Cherry Drop Coleus. I don't think that that was the right name for it. They should have renamed it something else, and hopefully they will rename it because it does not drop the way that Chocolate Drop Coleus does. Um, so I don't think I'll be repeating this one next year. I'm not. I mean, the color is really pretty, you know, and it is a it's it's a good Coleus, um, but it's it doesn't do what it what what I thought what I assumed that it would do basically. So we'll see if Proven Winners improves that a little bit, but I have to say that's that's probably not one of my favorite introductions. So these pots will be coming with me. This Meyer Lemon pot will be coming with me. This Kiss Me Kate pot 
these are these are pretty much done um this is kiss me kate rose from heirloom roses this will be coming with me and then these two stock tanks will be coming with me that i have to come in and i have to shear them way back these were my pollinator stock tanks so i have um meant to be queen nectarine agastache in here that is doing fantastic i'm going to transplant that out look at my flocks look at how beautiful that's looking right now that is looking so good um and then i do have some milkweed i don't see any monarch eggs on there uh, yeah i don't see any um so i probably will just i'll probably just share that back just completely share it back and then my grape that i again forgot to hook up to drip succumbed it died that's okay <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine uh this is my greenhouse this is my paul ram hybrid greenhouse i've really really enjoyed it i think i am going to get another paul ram greenhouse for my new garden i want to get one that's a little bit bigger i think you know here in california greenhouses are great but i can't justify spending you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on one of those beautiful greenhouses just simply because we don't use it a ton. We don't like, like I love having this greenhouse for, um, the winter and then having plants in right before the, um, my last frost date, but like there's, there's probably like four months that we use it less compared to other people in lower growing zones. So I was thinking about that as I was thinking about a greenhouse for my next garden. And was I going to save up money and buy a nice greenhouse? And I think, I think I'm not going to, and not that Paul Ram isn't a nice greenhouse. Paul Ram is the company that makes these. They sell these at like Home Depot and Tractor Supply and um, I think Gardener Supply sells them as well. Um, but I'm pretty, I'm really happy with them. I think that they're good greenhouses. I will be taking the potting benches that I made in there. Um, and yeah, I think I will be getting another Paul Ram. Of course, things can change, of course. But that's my thoughts so far is that I will be getting another greenhouse, probably the same company, maybe a little bit bigger, um, uh, but I will be leaving this one here. Okay, then finally I have my tropical summer pots that I have here. Again, these will be going with me. They have a uh, toucan coral canna that's beautiful. Once I came out here and deadheaded them, it was like night and day. So, so pretty. And I actually saw a hummingbird on these yesterday, which was so pretty. I tried so hard to get a picture of it. I just never can do it. Um, behind there, this is upside key lime. Uh, Ipamia, and it's beautiful. It's not growing a ton, but it is pretty equal to the purple hyacinth bean. It's pretty much at the same height. So I kind of wish I could see how tall that they would get, um, but <laughs> I'm not going to have that opportunity because these are coming with me. So then I have Luscious Lantana Lemon Tart that is coming into its own right now. It is happy with this heat. It loves this heat. Supertunia persimmon. It's funny because when I was at Four Star, I don't know if you all saw that video. You sh it's it was so interesting. I followed Josh Miller around, who um, he's the guy that like travels all around the country, and, oh I'm sorry, all around the world looking for new varieties to breed and sell under the proven winner's name, and um, so he knows everything about all the annuals. It's so interesting. And I was telling him that I felt like persimmon should, should have been a Vista. And he said it almost was, it almost was. And the only reason why it wasn't a Vista is it didn't uh, climb on itself or, or uh, produce scaffolding as much as a Vista should. Um, so it was almost a Vista, but that should just tell you how prolific the Supertunia persimmon is. And I really, really like this plant. And then here we have the watermelon mini me um, mini me watermelon coleus color blaze mini me watermelon coleus there we go beautiful this is a beautiful coleus I love it this is full sun and it's doing really well I have other ones in my front garden that are getting full sun I think they're not getting enough water because they don't look like this so I'll have to play with that and see how that works I came in I don't know if you all saw that video it was just a couple days ago I came in and I trimmed I did my midsummer trimming from for these pots and they look so much better now that I trimmed them. I'm so glad that I did that because it really made a really big difference. 
All right, you guys, so that is it. That is my final back garden tour. See, I'm holding it together for this one. I've got this one. <laughs> so everything is looking good. Everything is in its season of abundance. I will miss all of this. I think I'm not as sad about the backyard because a lot of the backyard is pots. And so a lot of it I am taking with me. So there's only a couple plants that I'm really gonna miss um, as opposed to the front yard, which is like all of it I'm totally gonna miss. But yeah, it should be really Really interesting and I'm excited to move on to you know a new project I'm so excited about it I'm finally giving myself the opportunity to start dreaming about it and thinking about it and planning it and drawing it out and I'm just I'm so excited to show you all so let's see I have I think I have another week so there will be another week of um, videos and then after so not next week, but the week after is when I will do a tour of the new property. So stay tuned for that. From now on, all my garden tours will be at the new property. So it's just, it's crazy. It's just crazy to say that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching my garden tours. I love doing them. You all know how much I love doing them. And I want to encourage you all to do them yourself. Just take your camera out every month and take a garden, take a video of your garden because you will love looking back on it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.